Hey guys, I want to say that I may look high because I am. I've been meditating and something just arose resistless, effortless in consciousness. And thus, it's something I want to mention. I want to mention this because there's a lesson and it's not hidden. See, the truth is simple. It's right in front of our face. It's pure awareness. The awareness that we are at all times. That's all present and all pervading. And we want to understand that this universe consists of two things. Consciousness and energy. Simply, that's it. So, accordingly, different people are operating at different frequencies. We could say the sage or saint or mystic. We don't want to get hung up on the label because the word is simply something that points to a manifestation, points to something in physical, tangible reality. So, we don't want to let the image or the program that is stimulated by that word to dominate our thought process or confuse that with reality. The words are not the things to be realized. They're pointing at something that the person speaking them is communicating in order that something beyond the words can be realized. Why not? We don't want just get want to get hung up on the reasonable intellectual side of ourselves. Of course, that's important. You don't want to neglect it or negate it or deny it, but you don't want to get hung up on it either. You want it to be in balance with the feeling and with the sense of connectedness with the world around us. Now, I'll get into that later on in the video because this oneness is not just a concept it's an actual experiential not experience but witnessing because experience is a memory it's something that you can recall something that happened in the past whereas witnessing is is constant it's continuous it's a continuous sense of oneness and connectedness that there's no sense of separateness so i mention this because it's not only important but also relevant for everybody because everything is one in my experience <laughs> not just conceptually but viscerally so yesterday I was also meditating at the end of my mother's neighbor's driveway and I heard my name called Alex it got progressively louder I've said three times last one was you know the first one was Alex Last one was, Alex! Okay. And I didn't respond. And I didn't react. I don't know, I understand the difference between reacting and responding. She didn't snap me out of meditation. That would have been a reaction. Automatically opening my eyes and what? And there may seem to be a delay with somebody in a slower frequency state. We could say the sage, again, or the mystic, or the saint, who's operating predominantly in inner silence, and thus a lower frequency range of approximately, and yes, I'm calling this, we're calling this from memory, uh, four to seven cycles per second in the theta frequency range, whereas, you know, the ordinary average individual is operating in 13 plus cycles per second in the alpha frequency range. Different incarnations, different manifestations of the one energy, of the one consciousness, are operating at different states, different states of frequency. And thus, accordingly, my reaction was not what she expected. She expected my reaction to be in alignment with with her state of being, her frequency state. And it wasn't the response she expected. And so I got a text later that 
was, uh, you know, I, of course I didn't take serious. I read it, I was kind of like, wow, really? She said, I'm done. You should have listened to me earlier. I'm done. My initial thought was, done with what? You're done? Does that mean you're going to go to bed tonight and wake up the next day and carry that baggage, that program of you're done with you? You're done with what? You're telling me you're done with me? As if I'm a separate entity? A separate identity? As if I'm separate from you? Really, when you say that, you're saying you're done with you. <laughs> I am. It's the same I am. So I read that and I was kind of like, wow. Um, I didn't even do anything or say anything. I was silent. Just because I didn't react how you expected me to, uh, you're done? Okay, well, if you're done with what? Your, your love for me is done? If your love for me is conditional, if it's dependent on a reaction, then that's not something I want. I don't even want it. You can keep it. You know what I mean? And I say this well aware that she's going to be watching this. And I love you. I really do. And it's not conditional. It's not dependent on, upon anything. And I put myself out there like this. Put myself on here. In order to help free people from delusion. The delusion of separation. That's my intention. That's pretty much the common theme underlying all these videos. Expressed with different words. In different ways. In different lessons. It's really the same lesson. But... You know, we want to really be open and receptive and alert and understand that social reality and psychological reality is not necessarily what is true fundamentally. We want to know what is true. We are here for the truth, not what is true socially. Again, not what is true psychologically. Because different things are true for different people. But fundamentally, there's one truth. And that's the same for all of us. And, you know, that's existential truth. That's beyond what is social. We can look up in the sky and wonder and understand, wow. This big blue wonder that I seem to be under, but actually is a part of me, is an extension of me. And I see a shooting star. Wow, that's me. <laughs> that's me. I'm in eternity right now. This is it. God, this energy within me, the life force that is not separate from me. It's not a father figure or a father identity or, or something outside of myself. It's here right now. It's a living presence. We can feel this and witness this and inwardly cherish this when we embody this life force energy and understand this and have a change of consciousness. Again, there's only two things in the universe, energy and consciousness. We want to embody this energy and understand this consciously so that we can witness the oneness, not just think we understand it conceptually. You don't want to navigate this reality and traverse this wondrous existence as if we're a separate entity, as if we're disconnected or detached from it. No detachment is great. We all want to practice being detached from something that we think we need, that we can't live without. That's a great practice, but we don't want to be dependent on detachment. And we don't want to be overly attached either. We don't want to be polarized either which way. And thinking in terms of duality. We don't want to be attached or detached. We can be rooted and centered. Confident and calm. In our still silent, serene inner space of presence. And it's a place where every action is initiated spontaneously. Consciously, 
spontaneously. The action is animated by the presence. And its expression, its outward expression, it's felt inwardly. And the presence has an outward expression that we see in manifest reality as an appearance or a perception. But we want to understand that fundamental existential reality is not based on perception. It's not based on our psychology and our psychological drama. I mentioned this in one of, one of the other videos, not to repeat myself, but it's important. Just because we have a bad thought crawling in our head, that has nothing to do with existential reality. That has to do with our personality. And that's great. We all have a personality. But we don't want to confuse that with what we are fundamentally. What we are fundamentally animates itself through our personality so that it appears in the world and it expresses. But somebody who realizes this, a person who realizes this, realizes that they're not the personality. It's the presence expressing through them, being channeled through them. And thus, action is effortless. But at the same time, we could say again like the sage who's operating predominantly in inner silence. Dwelling in that inner space of subjective stillness. It actually takes volitional effort to focus their attention outwardly. To react like I was talking about earlier. In order to respond. So everything is conscious. It's super conscious. There's no unconscious or dark moments. The sun is shining at every moment. Even if the clouds in front of the, in front of the sun. Seems to be in front of the sun. The sun is still shining within. Sun is still shining within. Say that ten times fast. Fundamentally, we can't make a mistake. When you're committed to the path of sincere and wholehearted, you're devoted to the path of devotional service, which is a powerful act of the human will, devoting your life to God, which is life. God is life. It's not your life. It's not a separate life. But devoting the part, this piece of life that you are, to God, to serving others, serving your fellow man, which is an expression of God. You know, that's a very powerful act of the human will. And we want to really understand that it's really the path to fulfillment. Not the endless cycle of self-gratification. I'm going to work to get a paycheck. So I can do it again the next week. So I can do it again the next week. So I can... You know, fulfill my personal desires and, you know, whatever they may be. We want to flip the direction of our desire over and live for something beyond ourselves so that we're not just limited to a personality and a seemingly separate reality. We want a desire to, because as long as we're in this body, there's no get, getting around desire, right? The question is the direction of our desire. The question is, what's our motivation? What's our intention? Intention is powerful. And like I was saying, you know, oftentimes certain people are operating spontaneously. And they're guided by an intention that's heartfelt. Not everyone. <laughs> Hopefully, we're humanity. We're we're getting there. We're getting there. Here, it's right now.
even the desire to, let's say, liberate ourselves from material bondage. You know, that's great. But you get to a certain point where there really is no such desire. True desirelessness is devotional service, wanting to serve, being committed to the process. Because that's going to create a very powerful situation. When an entity is committed to humanity, something beyond their personal well-being, but the well-being of others, that creates a very powerful situation. Not because they're seeking power. Power for its own sake is worthless. It's pointless. Temporary. We want the eternal. We want our destiny. We don't want something temporary. Anything that this world has to offer is temporary. We want to concentrate our effort and attention inwardly. And of course that may express outwardly and manifest itself in the world. But there's no one to take credit for it. That's enlightenment. There's no one to blame if it doesn't happen. And there's no one to take credit for it if it does happen. It happens by itself. It happens through you. Because you're in a certain state that allows life to guide you. Life has a plan for you. Life has a plan for each one of us. And we want to get in tune with this. We want to listen to our inner voice. We want to free ourselves from material entanglement. And as I said earlier in the video, the intention of these videos is to free people from the delusion of separation. That they're somehow separate from anything in this world. Of course, there's a part of them. There's an aspect of our human awareness that is pure transcendence, pure awareness that is transcendent to anything in this world. But at the same time, it's intrinsic and imminent within it, simultaneously transcendent and imminent. It's within us and outside of us. It appears in this world as everything you see outwardly. And at the same time, there's a space that you can access within you that is way beyond the five senses, way beyond anything in this world. And you get to a certain point where there is no within and without. It's all one. It's all that sense of oneness. And you feel that. Even if, you know, you feel that somebody else doesn't feel that. <laughs> if somebody kind of feels a sense of separateness. That they're not connected with the world around them. Just by being in your presence, that can help them come off of that. Thus, we want to be aware of our associates, who we associate with, because that's important. Again, we really want to understand things in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration, not just conceptually. We want to understand it viscerally by becoming it, by being it. Knowing about something is not the same as being it and knowing it. <laughs> you can accumulate all the information in the world, but that's... You know, we're, we're not taking any of that with us. What we do with the body, we can work out at the gym physically. We can exercise our mind mentally, a lot of intellectual stimulation, and that's great. You don't want to negate those aspects of ourselves, again. But we're not taking that with us when the body perishes, right? We're taking our energy with us. What we do with our energy, that's eternal. So we want to understand this. <laughs> again, we want the eternal. We don't just want something temporary. And the foolish man really focuses all his efforts and attention on, you know, sensual pleasure, money, even physical health, and devotes no time to the eternal treasure, which is here and now. It's within us. We can experience it. We can witness it again. There's no experiencer. There's no separate experiencer. We're the witness of it. We're the pure awareness that's lovingly aware. The loving witness of all that is. That feels deeply. 
that sense of connectedness. And at the same time, transcendence. Wow, I'm a part of all of this. But at the same time, it's automatic. I'm aware that I'm beyond it. It's beautiful. We don't want to get hung up on the bodily concept. Thinking of ourselves as a limited to a body, a bodily structure, or even a mental structure. A sense of meanness. We want God, we want God to guide us. And relinquish that sense of meanness. We can do that again through certain practice, seeing our attention, meditation, fasting. It's a big one. Uh, fasting. I'm going to fast right now in a fasted state. And what that does practically is it frees the life force from feeling like it has to depend on external sources for sustenance. It's self-sustaining. Self-maintaining. Who is the sustainer, the maintainer, the controller of all of this universe? It's not a personal me, not a personal meanness. It's that life force, this life force within us. And words are powerful because they're, as they're being spoken, they're an expression, they're an emanation of that force. They're pure energy. But we don't want to get hung up on the words and think that they're reality. Reality is the energy. Like I said in the last video, we want to identify with the energy, not just a personal separate meanness conceptually. You know, that's great. Again, we all have personality. That's an aspect of this human experience that we don't want to deny entirely. But we want to be able to compartmentalize it and not get hung up on it. Because then we can utilize it accordingly. With a sense of zest and easygoingness that can sometimes be serious, but can sometimes come off of it. And you know, just be laid back and have fun and realize, you know, this is it. We're in heaven right now. This is utter, pure bliss and harmony. Pure existence. And you get to a certain point, subjectively, where you realize that there is no existence and non-existence. Because that's a duality in itself. Think about that one. Fasting can really help us get into these powerful subjective states and witness them for ourselves, not just hear from somebody else and think we know it because we know about it, because we've heard it. Hearing it is great. You know, that can help motivate us on our path, whatever that may be, whatever your path is. We want to understand this life force within us. We don't want to have lust for it. Because having lust to accumulate it in the brain is still lust, just in the other direction. Instead of wanting to expend it outwardly, you know, through our lower head, <laughs> our lower mind, wanting to accumulate it in our higher mind, you know, it's, it's kind of still lust. Desirelessness is, again, a sense of service, wanting to give that life, give that energy to the world around you. And you feel that sincerely. And you need not entirely even know how it's going to happen. A lot of these videos, I didn't plan them. I didn't know that I would be making them. But I do know that I have a sincere desire, a sincere desire to serve in whatever way the Lord has me serve. And you know, that's, not uh, to make this about me, but the most powerful thing we can do is lead by example. And so I mentioned certain things
presence, pure peace, and bliss, a sense of allness, it's living, pure abundance, that which animates everything, the worldly experience. Now we can simply allow this to express through us, not take credit for it, not think we're the cause of it, <laughs> not think that anything is causing anything else in this world. It's happening automatically, potentiality arising automatically and effortlessly. Different entities based on their karmic uh, substance essence are expressing differently but fundamentally or pure transcendence energetically beyond this worldly creation God simultaneous in creation and transcended to it again that point can't be reiterated enough Because, you know, impersonalists will say that, oh, any 